Hi everyone, welcome to the 86th episode of the Ask Dr. Khan Show. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, functional medicine doctor, and on the show we seek to give you answers that will help you solve your health puzzle and help you get well and stay well. Most people come to us because they've been everywhere, done everything, tried everything else, been to all the medical doctors, taking medication and still not getting better. And then they swing all the way to the other side, start taking natural supplements, and that doesn't work for them either. So then they end up in my practice, and we identify the root cause and help them turn their life around. We have over 100 video testimonials on our website at AskDrKhan.com. Go there and check it out. Proof is in the pudding. We get results for our clients through functional medicine, nutrition, lifestyle change, and targeted detoxification. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to talk about chronic stress, the effect of stress have on your body, and what kind of symptom they can produce. So stress, uh, we've been talking about stress the past couple of shows. If you haven't seen previous episode at the Ask Dr. Dr. Don Show, you can go to our Facebook timeline, subscribe and like at Hope Integrative Wellness and watch previous episode of the show where I talk about leaky gut, I talk about hormones, I talk about thyroid and autoimmune disease. It's all listed on a timeline, free for you to consume to help you. All the shows are also recorded and posted on our YouTube channel at Dr. Peter Khan. And uh, we have over uh, 400 videos on, on our YouTube channel. So that's a great so repository of information for you. So if you missed previous episode, go there. Now, today we're going to talk about, again about the effect of stress on the body. And what happens is you got to re realize that chronic stress depletes your body of resources, of hormones, and also causes immune and blood sugar dysregulation. So let's talk about chronic stress. And what happens is all stress will induce fight or flight response. Fight or flight means that stress response where your body's perceiving danger, right? This is very primitive. So as your body, just think about cavemen. You know, if you encounter a predator or saber-toothed tiger, you either have to fight the tiger to stay alive or you have to run away from the tiger or your lunch, right? So fight or flight response is a physiological response tr triggered by stress. And that stress can be real or perceived stress, right? Meaning, if you just think about something stressful, your body will go into fight or flight whether you're in that stressful situation or not. So we, we actually manufacture stress. That's what anxiety is. It's worrying about things that would never happen, right? So you get, we got to learn how to you know, have the proper mindset and paradigm so that we can handle the stress. See, there's always stress, but it just depends on how you perceive it. So fight or flight response will trigger body to release stress hormone. Now realize that stress hormone, especially cortisol, is a hormone made by the adrenal gland. All these hormones are steroid-based hormones. Steroid-based. Okay, so steroid hormones all starts out with cholesterol. So for you to make these hormones, for you to make anything in your body, it's all nutrition based. You take food that you eat and your body break down that food, absorb it and convert it into a hormone, convert it into an enzyme, use it to make you know, brain cells, use it to make healthy skin, use it to replace or regenerate organ cells, everything in your body is all nutrition driven. So when you have low thyroid hormone or if you have adrenal fatigue, you must ask, why is that process breaking down? Is there something interfering with me delivering nutrient to that particular pathway so that I'm not able to make that? So that's always the question you wanna ask. You don't wanna just be taking a hormone. You wanna ask, why is the hormone deficient in the first place? What's causing that and how can I replace that or fix it naturally without the need to take hormones? And hormones always a, a secondary step, right? If you, if you can't fix it by natural means and you feel lousy, you can take a hormone to improve your quality of life, but you still gotta address the underlying reason why. So all hormones or all steroid hormones, such as cortisol, are, starts with cholesterol. So let's draw out the cholesterol pathway here. So we have, starting from the top, Cholesterol is the food stuff 
that your body take to make hormones. So cholesterol will be converted into pregnenolone. This is a hormone. It's actually primarily produced in the mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of the cell. Pregnenolone has two different directions it can take, depending on stress. So stress is the factor that decides if it's going to go this way or this way. It can either go this way, pregnenolone can end up turning into progesterone. So this is the hormone synthesis pathway. Pregnenolone can convert into progesterone, and uh, eventually this can be converted into cortisol. If you go this way, then that pregnenolone is going to be converted to DHEA, and eventually, through many steps, it can e turn into either testosterone, or it can convert into estrogen. So you have a decision to make. If your body is under stress, meaning perceived or real, what happens is your body is going to push into the cortisol pathway. It's going to push all these hormones into this direction because it needs more stress hormone to help you overcome stress. Then it's going to sacrifice these guys. So these, this is called pregnenolone steel, where your body takes the limited amount of resource you have because this guy right here, you only make so much in a day. It's not an infinite supply. So when people say adrenal fatigue, that means you run out of supply because you can only make so much stress hormone in a day. And if you have more stress than you have stress hormones, then you're gonna start to you know, hit blanks, right? You're gonna, you're gonna run out of gas. And that's essentially what happens. Your body will start to steal from this side. It'll rock Peter to pay Paul. It'll shunt the hormone pathway preferentially into this step to give you more cortisol to keep you alive or the fight or flight response. So know that all hormones, st all, uh, steroid hormones are produced by cholesterol. So what happens if you have low cholesterol because you're taking a cholesterol lowering drug or you're vegetarian and you just eat low fat, low fat, low fat, zero fat in your diet, and what happens in low cholesterol situations, you're not gonna be able to make enough pregnenolone, which is the mother hormone for these steroid hormones. You're not gonna have enough ability to make cortisol. And if you're already stressed, and you just keep bringing on more stress, you're going to eventually have low cortisol. You're going to run out. And then you, you have what's called adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency. So when we say adrenal fatigue, all that means is you have low amount of hormone, adrenal hormone. You just can't make enough. So what is the effect of this adrenal fatigue? Well, let's show you the effect of adrenal fatigue or adrenal activation on aldosterone. One of the hormones is produced here. It actually can go into aldosterone. This is a major adrenal hormone. Called, it's a mineral corticoid. This hormone produced by the adrenal gland regulates kidney electrolyte reabsorption, the retention of sodium and potassium. Okay, so what are some of the problems that can ensue if you have adrenal issues from chronic stress that causes these hormone fluctuations? So really we're talking about hormone imbalance. So when people say, I have hormone imbalance, what the heck does that mean? This is what it means. You're, not, you're either making too much of this or too little of this. You're making too much of this or too little. You're making too much or too little. Some form of too high or too low, right? So the effect of chronic stress on aldosterone. So this hormone made by the adrenal gland in the face of chronic stress is that you can develop aldosterone depletion, meaning you run out of aldosterone. Because chronically stimulated adrenal glands, it's going to cause you to release aldosterone in the beginning, but as you keep releasing aldosterone, eventually you run out, you get aldosterone depletion. It means you don't have enough anymore. And what happens when you have low aldosterone, this hormone helps you retain sodium. So as you start to have the aldosterone deficiency, you lose the ability to retain sodium. As you lose the ability to retain sodium, your blood pressure will start to drop, right? So one way to increase blood pressure is to taking a lot of salt. But if you are not able to retain that sodium because you're just peeing it out and sweating it out because you have low aldosterone, your blood pressure will start to drop. Now, 
blood pressure dropping below a certain level will start to cause a problem, right? High blood pressure is bad, but low blood pressure is just as bad, if not worse, because that's the first step in fuel delivery. If you can't have perfusion, when you're getting blood pumped through your tissue, you're not gonna feel very good because you cannot deliver energy to your tissue. So we gotta have proper blood pressure. Like, you know, and the medical professional tend to say, well, high blood pressure is bad, high blood pressure is bad. So we're brain thinking into, brainwashed into thinking high blood pressure is bad. So then you start getting layered on blood pressure drug after blood pressure drug after blood pressure drug, and now your blood pressure is so suppressed that you actually feel horrible. So when you have low blood pressure, then you have low perfusion of your tissue, and what that's gonna lead into is you're gonna have cold hands, cold feet. Poor circulation, so your hands and feet, your extremities cold all the time, your nose is cold. That's a problem with perfusion. So if you have cold hands, cold feet, and your nose is cold, just put cold in the comment section. So I know you have, you know you have circulation problems. You're gonna see other people put that comment on there, meaning that this is a really common issue, because a lot of people have low blood pressure as a result of chronic stress causing aldosterone insufficiency. Another problem with the inability to retain sodium is going to lead to low blood pressure, which will lead to low brain endurance. Your brain is very highly dependent on blood flow. It needs to have oxygen delivered to it all the time. If you have low pressure, that means you can't push blood to your brain. You're going to decrease the amount of oxygen delivered to your brain cells. You're going to have low brain endurance. How does that show up? That means you fall asleep easily. You lay on the couch, you fall asleep. You read, you fall asleep. You drive, you feel sleepy, you get tired. You do anything mentally intensive, like driving, reading, or doing some kind of work, you feel tired, fatigue, you just can't stay awake. That's low brain endurance. That can result from adrenal issues by itself. Low blood pressure, which will lead to low perfusion, can also cause hair loss. Because remember, your extremity, like your hands and feet, as well as the top of your head, are the farthest away from your heart, right? Anything that's the farthest away from the heart takes a lot more pumping of the blood to get there. So that's why cold hands, cold feet, the hands and feet gets cold before your chest gets cold, right? You're always gonna retain temperature in the core, but the extremity is gonna suffer. Your head is one of the five extremity, right? Things that stick out from your, from your trunk, and in fact, going to the head is going up against gravity. So it takes even more to pump blood there. So if you have low blood pressure, you can't get blood flow to your scalp, then your hair follicle doesn't get nourished with blood and nutrient, then you're gonna have thinning hair, dry hair, brittle hair, and hair loss. And that's the consequence of this adrenal issue, chronic stress causing the gland, remember we're talking about the adrenal gland here, the adrenal gland produces aldosterone. So if you have poor adrenal function and aldosterone depletion, one symptom of that is low blood pressure or one sign of that. And then the, the symptom is cold hands, cold feet, low brain endurance, hair loss. How many of you experienced that? Put low blood pressure, low pressure in the comment section so that I know and you know and other people will know that yes, this is a common issue. A lot of people have that and they're treating it all wrong. It's an adrenal issue and it's a blood pressure issue. Okay, because most people automatically think it's a thyroid problem. It may be, it may not be. It may be strictly due to adrenal insufficiency and nothing to do with the thyroid. So we want to be able to identify it by running specific lab tests and doing a good case history and identify that. I'm going to tell you most of the time this is not done in a clinical setting, whether in a conventional medical model or in a natural alternative model. Okay? Next, when you cannot retain sodium, what happens is you're going to get salt craving. So how many of you crave salt? Right? You crave salt, you want to eat salty chips, you just need a lot of salt to just feel satisfied. You crave it because you're trying to push up your pressure. You're trying to do that innately. You just know that you don't feel right and your body's giving you a signal to crave salt to push that pressure up. You also, when you have aldosterone depletion due to adrenal insufficiency, you can have abnormal perspiration. So typically you sweat a lot. You sweat even though you didn't do anything. You just sweat. Okay, so that's a sign of uh, inability to retain. So, and also another really common symptom is you always feel dehydrated. Is I have clients tell me all the time, Doc, I drink water all day long, but I still feel like I'm dehydrated. I just always feel like I don't have enough water, even though I drink all the time. Because you're not able to retain that sodium, so you can't hold on to that fluid. You're having fluid loss, basically. Okay? And also you'll have frequent urination. I have people tell me all the time, too, Doc, I'm just, 
I pee all the time. Even though I don't drink that much water, but I'm just peeing all the time. That's a consequence of electrolyte imbalance. So you're losing the water because you cannot retain your fluid. So frequent urination, always dehydrated, abnormal perspiration, salt cravings, and then cold hands, cold feet, low brain and nerves, and hair loss. These are all signs of aldosterone issues. So how do we clinically support that? Well, one thing you can do is sea salt, right? Don't use the crappy Morton's table salt. Use natural sea salt because it's gonna have minerals besides just sodium. It's gonna have a cross section of all the healthy minerals. So you can use sea salt to push your pressure up because that's gonna help you to get perfusion to improve. If you can just get that perfusion to improve, you're gonna do better. So what's normal blood pressure? 120, 80 will be normal. Now how low is low? If you're below 105, 70, that's considered low, okay, in my book. It's, it's low to the point where you're not gonna feel great. If you're below 100, like you're always running 90 over 60, that's definitely low. You're not, you're not gonna feel good at all. So we need to do things to push that perfusion up so you don't feel horrible. Another thing we can use is uh, 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 alkalizing minerals. So basically to improve electrolyte function, because typically you, when you have low aldosterone, you cannot uh, retain most of your electrolyte besides just sodium. You know, you also have problems with chloride and other things too. So taking an electrolyte supplement can help. Another thing you need to consider is adaptogens. So this is where we want to address, use the adaptogen to address the adrenal gland, to support it, to give your body a little help, right? But always with adrenal support, we always want to look at the underlying triggers. What are the triggers? Could be a food sensitivity, could be a chronic viral infection like Epstein-Barr virus, could be chemical toxicity, could be just stress like the holiday stress. These are the things that you want to address to actually help heal your adrenal gland. Not just taking a pill, but actually address lifestyle issues. Okay, that's how you get permanent results. Another thing to consider is glyceriza. Running out of room here. So this is your licorice root. The licorice root has the ability to extend, to increase the half-life of cortisol, which can have a little lifting effect on it. But again, you always want to address the underlying trigger. So this is the effect of chronic stress have on aldosterone, which these are the symptoms. How many of you can identify it with that? If you identify with aldosterone, say aldosterone, type in aldosterone in the comment section. Just type in aldo, aldo, so that you know how often this is happening in people. So please participate. This is for your benefit to, to have that community to share your experience because this is gonna help you and help other people to be able to see that this is not, you're not the only one. You're not crazy. You're not making this stuff up despite, you know, inattention and ridicule from your medical doctor. He's like, oh doc, I think I have adrenal fatigue. And they say, yeah, there's no such thing. Come on now, come on now. I just list out a physiological pathway. And if you're a provider and you say, oh, there's no adrenal fatigue, then you need to like pay attention. You need to start studying it up. Watch this video, okay? The next thing is the effect of chronic stress on blood sugar. So chronic stress is gonna cause adrenal activation. Again, what does that mean? That means, remember, stress, either real or perceived, will cause your brain to perceive that and it's gonna fire off your adrenal glands. These are two walnut-sized glands on top of the kidney. These hormone glands will start to get stimulated to make more hormone, right? To make more stress hormone to help you handle the stress, right? The more stress you have, the more stress hormone you need to kind of get sugar going. So that's one of the main effects of cortisol is that it increases blood sugar. So when you have adrenal activation, let's start on this side here. So what we have is you have adrenal stress. That means right now you're stressed and your adrenal gland is trying to keep up with that stress by going into hyperfunction, meaning it's making too much. So you're gonna have high cortisol because of hyperfunction. High cortisol, the effect of cortisol is that increase the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. So glycogen is basically starch in your body, right? You store it mostly in the muscle and then also in the liver. Your body will break down glycogen into glucose so you have more energy, more sugar in your blood to make energy to fight or flight, right? What happens is as you increase your blood sugar level because of this breakdown due to stress, you're gonna to start to develop insulin resistance. And that's gonna to lead to high blood sugar. 
As you get high blood sugar, one of the main signs of high blood sugar and insulin resistance is that you're going to become sleepy and tired after a meal. You get sleepy and tired after you eat a meal. That's a very common symptom. It's a telltale sign that you have blood sugar issue or prediabetes or you're already diabetic or you have insulin resistance. And what that's going to also lead to when you have this high cortisol issue, which was going to lead to high blood sugar and insulin resistance, is that you're going to have trouble losing weight. You're going to gain weight in the midsection, in the belly, and you cannot lose it even though you eat perfect because it's not a diet issue, it's a stress issue. So if you're constantly stressed, even if you eat good, you'll be one of those persons who, hey, I eat nothing, I still put on weight. It's because it's not the diet. <laughs> you can't change your diet enough to mitigate the stress. Now, the, the diet itself could be a stress, right? If you, if you have food sensitivity or gluten sensitivity, you keep eating the food that you're sensitive to, you're going to add more stress to your system. But certainly there could be mental stress, there could be chemical stress, there could be infection as a stress. We got to address those issues. But this is in the case of hyperadrenal function, too much that will cause high blood sugar leading to sleepy and tired after a meal and weight loss resistance. On the other hand, you can have adrenal fatigue. This is adrenal stress, this side is adrenal fatigue. That means now you're running low, hypo function, because your adrenal gland just cannot keep up and you, know you cannot make enough hormones, so now you run low on your cortisol, which is the adrenal hormone, which will decrease the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. So now you cannot convert glycogen into glucose. So you're going to get low blood sugar, and that low blood sugar is going to lead to low energy. You get shaky, lightheaded, or irritable between meals, or if you wait too long before you eat, or if you skip meal, you just feel horrible. That's a cardinal sign of low blood sugar. And that low blood sugar issue can be due to, most commonly due to, this adrenal issue, hypofunction. Okay? And also, once you get this low energy, then you start eating because you feel like you're going to pass out. So you eat and your energy is recovered after you eat. So, oh, thank goodness I ate. Now I feel better. That's a cardinal sign that you got a blood sugar issue, particularly a low blood sugar issue. Okay, so if you have low energy, fatigue, lightheaded, shaky, irritable between meals, that's relieved by eating, you got low blood sugar issues. And the commonality between these two is that you get sweet cravings. How many of you have sweet cravings? Put a sweet in the comment section. Again, you're gonna see so many people with their hands up or in the comments say sweet because you got sweet craving either due to high blood sugar or low blood sugar. Both of them will create a sweet craving. So that's also a sign of blood sugar breakdown and usually it's secondary to adrenal activation. So at the end of the day, we need to address the stress because you see the arrow, if you go all the way to the top, you wanna to address that, not just that. So many people are told to take, right? Holy basil, uh, ginseng. Uh, licorice root, whatever supplements to the adrenal, but we're failing to address the stress, the trigger. Again, the trigger could be food sensitivity, could be a viral infection, could be a toxicity issue, could be toxic people, <laughs> emotional stress, right? It could be any number. It could be chronic inflammation. These are all things that will wear your body out because you just cannot constantly stimulate that gland and expect you to continue to function normally, okay? Now last but not least, chronic stress can also cause insomnia. So here are the physiological pathways of how adrenal stress causes insomnia. So we have chronic stress causing adrenal activation. This adrenal activation can either cause high cortisol, hyperfunction, or it'll cause low cortisol, adrenal low function. Both instances can cause sleep issues. Okay, it's because everything in your body's got to work just right. Too much is bad, too little is bad. Balance is the key, right? That's why you say, I want to balance my horn. What the heck does that mean? Take out the highs, take out the lows, right? So we've got to be able to identify that first. So high cortisol, when you have adrenal stress, what's going to happen is going to lead to increased sensitivity of your catecholamine receptor. What does that mean? <laughs> that means that in your brain, in your reticular activating system, which is that part of the brain, your brainstem, that controls a wakefulness and alertness states, there's a lot of receptors for catecholamines, for these stress hormones. So catecholamines are stress hormones. So that includes your epinephrine, norepinephrine. That's your adrenaline, right? Your adrenaline hormone. So when people say you have adrenaline rush, why do you have the adrenaline rush? Because of a stressful event, right? You get psyched up. That, that feeling of that adrenaline rush is that fight or flight response. So what happens is the receptors for these adrenaline hormones are actually sensitized when you have high cortisol. 
that's going to increase the activation of the reticular activating system, which is a part of the brain that makes you stay alert and awake. So what happens is, if your brain is staying turned on and awake all the time, then you can't fall asleep. So the clinical symptom will be like, yeah, I can't fall asleep, man. It takes me forever. I just can't shut my mind off. That could be due to adrenal hyperfunction, turning on the part of the brain that makes you stay awake so you can't fall asleep. On the other hand, if you have adrenal fatigue or adrenal hypofunction, low function, you're going to have low cortisol. The end result of low cortisol is that you cannot break down glycogen to glucose. Remember we talked about that on the previous slide. So if you cannot break down glycogen into sugar, then you're going to have low blood sugar. Now, because you don't have enough sugar, then your body cannot synthesize or make glycogen because glycogen is starch, it's a bunch of glucose chained together. So if you don't have enough sugar, you don't have enough glycogen. And then further, you can't break the glycogen into sugar. It's become a vicious cycle. So neither you don't have the means to get sugar, but you cannot synthesize the glycogen to get the sugar either. So the end result is that your adrenaline hormone, the catecholamine, start to go up as a compensation because what happens is your blood sugar is just dropping and it's a vicious cycle, so there's no end in sight. So your body's trying to rescue you by going to a secondary, like a backup parachute, which is your adrenaline hormone. So what happens your adrenaline hormone goes up when your blood sugar drops during sleep. So what happens is, say you eat dinner at 6 p.m., you go to bed at 10 p.m., by the time 3 p.m. come around, so from 6 p.m. to 3 p.m., it's already been like, what, that's nine hours that so you haven't had food, so now you experience low blood sugar episode, and because you have low cortisol, adrenal fatigue, you cannot break down sugar or break down glycogen into sugar, so your blood sugar keeps dropping, but the cortisol normally bring that sugar up so you don't get that low sugar and pass out during sleep, but you don't have cortisol to do it, so your body, to try to save you, make a secondary hormone, adrenaline, to keep that blood sugar up. But adrenaline, right, when you have adrenaline rush, do you feel like sleeping? No. So what happens is you get nighttime low blood sugar because of that episode, but the adrenal, adrenaline kicks in, and now you can't stay asleep. This is the person that wake up several times during the night, and you can't fall back to sleep. So some people have both. Some people can fall asleep, and they can't stay asleep. So what happens is their blood sugar is up and down like this because of their lifestyle issue, how they're eating, the timing of when they eat, and also inflammatory patterns. So these are different things that can cause either a sleep issue, you can't fall asleep or stay asleep due to different pathways. And there's different things that can cause blood sugar symptoms of low energy, shaky, lightheaded, irritable between meals, or you get fatigue after a meal. Both what have caused sweet craving tend to be the people that have high blood sugar will have weight loss resistance. But certainly you can have both. Some people have both these symptoms. That means again the blood sugar is up and down on the roller coaster. And then don't forget the effect of adrenal gland. On aldosterone, which is another hormone made by the adrenal gland, which regulates kidney electrolyte reabsorption, and when you have aldosterone depletion due to adrenal fatigue, you may have inability to retain sodium, which will lead to blood pressure issues, you get low pressure, which will cause cold hands, cold feet, low brain endurance, and hair loss. And also you may have salt cravings, abnormal sweating, always dehydrated, and you pee all the time. So does that sound like something you experience? Maybe some of you experience only one or two categories of these. Maybe some of you experience all of it. I can't tell you how many clients that we see experience all of these because their system is so dysregulated from chronic stress. And remember, the stress can be from food, viruses, bacteria, leaky gut, autoimmune, you know, toxicity issues, and just stress from work, from relationships. So really, it takes an integrated approach, right? There's no magic pill. There's no like, just take this hormone, you're going to be fine. Just take this supplement, it's going to be fine. You have to actually look at the whole person and play the detective. So in, all, in my role as a health consultant, I consult with our clients to identify these things. See, how would you know these things if you don't even ask? Most doctors don't even ask these questions about their people's lifestyle and, and you know, the, how they live and the past medical history. You've got to actually listen first to pick up these clues, and then we can actually put a plan in place to recover your health. And that's the true functional medicine approach. And it's sorely missing in definitely the conventional medical model, but even the alternative model, most people are just given a supplement because it sounds like a good idea. Or most people don't even go to the doctor, they just use Dr. Google and self-diagnose, self-treat, and take a supplement thinking the pill is going to solve the problem. 
but you gotta solve the problem to solve the problem. Taking a pill will not necessarily do it. So hopefully this helps you, and thank you so much for joining me. And uh, you know, this week is uh, Christmas coming up. I wanna say ahead of time, Merry Christmas. I hope you have a great holiday. Stay healthy during the holiday. I'll have a special message for you next Monday at the next episode of the Ask Dr. Khan Show. Don't miss it. And I hope you stay tuned in. Please share and like and subscribe to our Facebook page. Share the video if you feel like this is helpful. Share with as many people as possible. People need to hear the message of health, that there's hope for them. Just keep in mind, we also uh, consult with clients all over the world. We have clients in London, in England. We have clients in Romania. We have clients that we've seen in Denmark, uh, all over the North America, in Canada, United States. We do it through teleconference, Skype, or Zoom uh, video conference. So if you have, if you know someone, or if you're watching this, not in Arizona, but out of area, we can help you. We have successfully helped people in all 50 states and also globally now. So please contact us at info at askdrcon.com or if you're within North America, you can call 480-988-6269 to set up a case review where we can go through this process, really identify what's going on with you and help you set a plan in place that'll help you get well and stay well. So hope you enjoy the show and I look forward to seeing you next week at the next Ask Dr. Khan Show. Take care. Yeah.